This is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to show you how to make this Christmas candy striped bandana. Now the pattern has three sizes included but I'm going to show you how you can make it for any size dog. It's stitched in basic double crochets with increases on both ends. Striping it, you can do it one solid color or you can use any colors that you want. Here I did one in what I call my frozen colors. I just did white and blue, you're only using two colors instead of three. Added a couple of sparkly snowflakes and a bell. This one is done just like this one. I added a sparkly uh, button. I was gonna say snowflake again. I added a red sparkly button and a green jingle bell. This one here doesn't have a jingle bell. So you can do whatever you want with this pattern. It's called the Christmas Candy dog bandana and I'm going to show you how you can make it for just about any size dog. Now this one is made out of cotton and these two are made out of worsted weight number four yarn. So you can use any yarns that you want. I had this cotton on hand so I thought I would try it and I really do love how it looks. And I also love the worsted weight number four. And if you use worsted weight number four cotton, either one are washable, and I like that. And then the neat thing about this bandana is you can uh, tie the ties in the back and then gently slip it right onto their head. And you tie it so that it fits all the time and you don't have to retie it every time you slip it on. And it's the perfect thing for, say, if your dog doesn't want to wear a sweater or a hat for a Christmas party or a holiday picture, or just a fun time to have on, just a little something extra for the holidays. All right, the yarn that I'm gonna be using today is, um, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to be using these three colors, pink, silver, and uh, white, almost said gray, um, with a sparkle in it. And so I'm gonna use this a little less traditional, but still really sparkly. But I think it would be fun for a New Year's Eve party as well, or even your dog's birthday party, if you wanna just give him a little something or her, something extra special to wear. Now, we're gonna be stitching with our H hook today, and you'll need your scissors for cutting yarns, but you'll also need a couple of things. You need, if you want to add a jingle bell, you can just pick up some of these at Hobby Lobby or uh, Michael's a bag of jingle bells, is a couple of bucks. You only need one per bandana. And then you're going to need some fun festive buttons. And if you're going to make it Christmassy, you know, you can choose this, like this is a, can, a piece of candy button. These are snowflakes and this is just a red sparkle button. Whatever you want to use, they're decorative, they don't do anything or you can leave it off. You can add a bow, a pom-pom, whatever you want to do, because that is just a little decorative thing to put on the back of the bandana. So, go grab you some jingle bells, some a fun button, and pick out your yarns. It takes very little yarn to make these, and then we'll get started. For our demonstration, don't forget this is a free pattern on my blog, and you can go to my blog and find that, but also I will put the link like I always do in the notes underneath the video. You can always find it there. And if you go to my blog at the top, there's tabs and it'll say free patterns for dogs, free crochet patterns, free knitting patterns, and they're on there also. So you can find them there. They're also on Ravelry. So anyway, back to our pattern. I'm going to be stitching the red portion in the pink, and then I'm going to use the white sparkle for this stripe. And then the edge part, I'm going to be using the silver color that sparkle also. So we're not going to need the silver just yet. We're going to start with the pink. We're going to begin with our slip knot. And then we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to place two double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. The third the first three double uh, first three chains, one, two, three, will count as our first double crochet. So just in case you don't know what a double crochet is, you yarn over, go in the stitch or chain you're working, and pull up that loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through the first two, 
yarn over and go through the second two. And the whole body of our bandana will be worked in double crochets. So our ch chain three counted as our first double crochet, our one double crochet, and then we need to do another double crochet for a total of three double crochets. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. The chain three at the beginning of each row will count as your first double crochet. So then we're going to turn and place another double crochet right in that same stitch as our chain three. Then we'll place one double crochet in the next double crochet. And then we're going to place two double crochets in the top of that chain three that counted as our first double crochet. So we'll need to go in the top of that chain three and stitch two double crochets. And then we'll chain three. One, two, well we won't chain three here. We're going to be changing colors and we need to always chain three after we do the color change. But let's talk about this for just a second. We have a chain three and two double crochets. On the next row we have two double crochets, one double crochet, two double crochets. So we increased from three to five. And on every row we will add an increased double crochet at the beginning and at the end. And that's how we begin to form our V. Um, on the rows that you're changing colors, you're going to grab your color and add it in and then do your chain three. If we chained three before, we would have one stitch of the other color and we don't want that. We want a nice, neat and tidy bandana. So we're going to change colors. Leave your pink or your first color attached and we're going to uh, go back and forth on the ends. And we're not going to cut it off each time because this will help us not have to weave in a bunch of ends. And then when we do our trim, we'll stitch our trim over those edges. And you'll see as we go along how that works. All right, so we change to our white sparkle and we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And you might wanna to have to snug that first color down just a little so it doesn't come undone. We're going to turn and we're going to place a double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. And then you're going to place a double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, put a little more yarn there, and three. Isn't this pretty together, this pink and white? All right, so now we need to stitch two double crochets in the top of our chain three from our previous round. So we're going to stitch one and two. And now we went from five double crochets to seven because we added one here and one here. And you can see that our V is beginning to form. The next row, we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and again, we're going to put one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. And then we'll put one double crochet in each double crochet across. There we go. Sorry about the sniff. And then we place two double crochets in the top of that chain three. So now we've done two stripes in pink and two stripes in white or whatever colors that you're using. So we're going to join our pink yarn back in and we do that, we just go along the side there and we pull it in and I kind of put my, my thumb on that pink one and then pull the white one and that snugs it down a little bit, whichever color that you're using and then this just trails along the edge. And then, of course, like I said, when we come back and do our trim, we'll stitch over that. So we're back to our pink, and we're going to chain three again. Two, three. All right. <clears throat> now this is the pattern that you will follow, increasing one double crochet at the beginning and end of each row um, in order to grow it to this. Now the pattern has three sizes included. 
um, has the extra extra small the extra small and the small but uh, this one is the small and if you want to make it bigger you just continue your your bandana as wide as you want it continue to increase one double crochet on each end until it is as big as you want it this one here fits Maximo and Rosie they're about six I think Max is six and Rosie is eight pounds now she's put a little weight on <laughs> so um, but it, it depends like some people want a smaller bandana on their dog so it's up to you but you just continue to uh, add a, a double crochet on the beginning and the end of each row until it is as big and wide as you want it for your dog all right we're going to be just making the extra extra small today just for our demonstration so we're going to go ahead and do another row we we'll put one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three and then we're going to place one double crochet in each stitch across and each row you're 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 increasing by two because you're putting that increase at the at the beginning and the end of each row so we're just double crocheting across our row and then when we reach that last stitch we're going to put two double crochets in the top And we'll continue this until it's the length that we need for our size. Again, we're placing one double crochet at the beginning and the end of each row, changing colors every two rows, and making sure when you chain, change colors that you do your chain three after your color change. Because if you don't, and you chained three with this white this first stitch over here would be white and we don't want that it wouldn't be a nice and tidy look all right I'm gonna go ahead and finish my rows and then I'll come back and show you how to do the trim and the ties so the extra extra small size is for your teeny tiny dogs that are about two to three maybe four pounds and this only has six rows we did two pink two white and two pink rows of double crochet increasing on each side in order to get our V so now that we're done we're going to change to our third color so I'm going to go ahead and cut those strings and get those out of the way and now we're going to join our third color now if you did it all one color or two colors and you don't want to change your color that's fine you don't have to You just join your new color in. And what we're going to do is we're going to be doing single crochet. So we're going to join it in and chain the one. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching across the top here. So we're just going to place one single crochet in each single crochet across. And what we're doing now is the trim. And just in case, I ought to tell you this, if you're not sure what a single crochet is, you take your hook, go through the stitch, and pull up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. You'll yarn over and go through both those loops. That's a single crochet. All right, so we're just placing one single crochet and each single crochet across. When we get to this corner, we're going to place two more single crochets in the corner for a total of three. And we do that so that it eases around this corner nice and smoothly because we're going to start coming down this way. We'll put three single crochets in the point. And then we'll work back up and we'll make sure that we grab where we did our color changes on the side. Now, when you're working down the side of a project where you're working in the sides of the stitches, it's real important to try to put your stitch in a stitch, not a hole. 
and um, because if you do only all the big holes you'll have great big holes on the sides now sometimes you have to um, but basically you're just evenly as best that you can stitching down the side trying to stitch in a stitch and grab that there we go so that you get a nice and neat appearance because we don't want those great big gaping holes and sometimes you do have to go in a hole and that's understandable but for the most part you want to try to go in a stitch it just gives it a much neater appearance I should say all right we're almost down to the bottom and I think this silver pink and white sparkle bandana is really really pretty all right let's get down to the corner so I can show you how to do that Pull out a little more yarn now you will have a tail just put it to the back and we'll weave that in with our needle after a bit and I'll show you how to do that as well all right so we've stitched down to the corner and right in that corner stitch we want to stitch one oops two and three stitches single crochets in the corner that way it moves around the corner nice and smoothly now this edge is our tricky edge and so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch over those strings where we carried our yarn across with this tiny one we didn't do as many because we don't have as many stripes so what we'll do is you'll just hold those down now we will come back in and clip off those longer strings but you're going to hold them down flat put your hook in there and just stitch right over those yarns and any yarn that doesn't get caught will go back through and with our needle we'll make sure that it's you know laying down and flat just take our time and make it look pretty there we go trying our best to make it even there we go get in that stitch <laughs> get in there <laughs> all right we're almost back up to the top you know and you can take a look at it if you don't like it you can take it out and redo it you're because it's you know up to you how it looks but here we are, we're stitching nice and even up the sides let's get those strings out of the way always push them to the back get them out of your way and you can stitch over them and then we can come back in with our needle and weave them in make them nice and neat now this last corner we need to put three stitches so this corner goes around nicely and then we're going to join to that first single crochet where we joined let me turn this around so you can look at it now here I did a couple of holes so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to fix that so that I don't have a couple of holes because I want it to look as nice and neat as this side does all right before I do that I don't, I'm not going to tie that off but I do want to turn it to the back and um, grab my needle and what we're going to do is we're going to tidy this up so we're just going to take those strings and thread it on our needle and uh, just weave those in now remember when you're weaving in to stay in the color as best that you can um, because if you weave it in in the white it might show through or if you weave the white into the pink that might show through so you just do some stitches going through the stitches with your needle like that and then you just cut that off and the other thing we'll need to do is this side like we've got a white showing here and I don't want that to come out because you know dogs play and you want them to be able to so I'm just gonna go in some of this white here go through some stitches and just pull that in and I'll go ahead and cut that end off like that give it a good stretch and we'll do the same thing up here we'll grab this pink one I'm not gonna tie that silver one off just yet because I'm going to fix this uh, side where I went in that hole there and I want to fix that and tidy that up because I'm going to give this to a friend who has a tiny little Yorkie I think they'd really like that so we're just going to stitch this in and tidy that up and then I'm going to show you how to put the ties on 
All right, so that we've uh, tidied it up. I put got all my strings all woven in. And what we're going to do next is we're going to chain one and we're going to stitch again across the top, putting a single crochet in each stitch across the top of our bandana. And this is just forming the um, edge, you know, to give it a little bit of thickness for the top. So we're going to put one single crochet in each single crochet across the top. And these instructions for the um, trim and the bandana uh, edge up here at the top are the same no matter what size that you're making. Only difference is you'll have more stitches to make. <laughs> All right, so we get all the way to the top of across the bandana, and we're going to start making the, the ties. And you'll notice my ties are not real long, and that's because I don't want the ties to get caught in dog toenails or teeth. And so I don't make them real long, and I'll show you how to tie that um, so that all you have to do is slip that on and off your dog's head. Now, for the ex extra, extra small, we're only going to be chaining 15. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, oops, popped out of there. 13, 14, 15. Now, for the extra small, you're chaining 20, and for the small, you're chaining 25. Now, if you make it bigger for a bigger dog, you can chain this as long as you want it. This is the length of your tie. All right, so now we're going to place one single crochet in that first stitch. And then we're going to single crochet all the way back down till we reach the bandana. So we'll place one single crochet in each chain across. So we placed one single crochet in each chain across. And now we're going to single crochet across the top of our bandana again. And then we're going to chain 15 again for our second tie. So one single crochet in each stitch across the top of our bandana. And then we're going to make our second tie. So here's our first tie, then we single crocheted across the top of our bandana, and now we're going to make our second tie. We're going to do it exactly the same. We're going to stitch 15, oops, <laughs> four, five, we're going to stitch 15 chains, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet back across that chain just like we did for the first tie. So I single crocheted back across my tie and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to slip stitch in that first stitch in order to make it look nice and tidy and then we're going to clip that yarn. And we'll pull that yarn through to the back and tie that off. And of course, we'll need to weave that end in. And that's your tie. Uh, tie. <laughs> that's your bandana for your dog. And um, this is the front. I pulled it the wrong direction. I thought, that doesn't look right. <laughs> your bandana does have a front in the back, and it's up to you which side you want to use. So the last thing we need to do, of course, we need to weave in that last tie. But we also need to decide on a button and a bell. So I'm going to use this pretty little silver bell, and I think I'm going to put this snowflake on here. What do you think? That, or should I put the dog bone? You know what? I'm going to go with the dog bone. All right, so I'm going to thread my needle. And to put our bell on, I'm just going to come up through the bottom of my bandana. I'm going to hold that tie, and I'm just going to make another whip stitch. And that just keeps it in place. Then the bottom of your bell has this edge like that where you can slide your needle through. You just slide it through 
go through your bandana again and this is made with you're sewing it on with yarn and so I'd make a couple of stitches going through that bell just to make sure it's going to stay put because just in case your dog decides it wants to or these are great for cats too by the way just in case they decide they want to chew on that you want to make sure it's on there nice and secure and then we'll stitch to the back and when we cut that string and one thing that I do because it is a bell is I tie a knot and I tie it several times I want to make sure that it's going to stay put just as many knots as you feel comfortable with and then clip that string so there's our bell and then you can choose any button that you want and the set you do the same thing I just go up and out like this through the back and then I go right back through leaving myself a little tail back there this button goes sideways so we'll do that and then I'll go right back through and I'll do that a few times until it's on nice and secure we want to make sure again that that button's going to stay put and no puppies are going to uh, chair it off or kitty cats for that matter and then we'll just tie a little knot And clip that. All right, now there's our tiny little bandana. Oops, let's get that string tied off too, real quick. We don't want any little strings hanging around. We'll just use our needle and weave that in real quick. Get that in there. I have found that if I use my needle, to weave in my ends they stay put so much better all right so here's my tiny little bandana it's adorable and again back to why we tie the strings uh, so why we make the strings the ties so short all you do is put it on your dog or your cat or whatever animal and tie just a basic knot And then um, all you have to do is slide it on and off your dog or cat or pet's neck without having to untie it every time. And the ties are nice and short, like I said, because we don't want these to get caught in their toenails or their teeth or anything else for that matter. It's just safety for me. If you want them longer, you can certainly make them longer. So there's our little Christmas candy striped bandana tie the ends and just an easy knot and then you can easily just slip the bandana right on their head like that good girl